Carl, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you. Income inequality is rising uh, across the world. What, what's behind this? Everyone understands that in a capitalist system, winners and losers will be created. However, those forces have been accentuated by a few other factors. The first is globalization. The flow of goods and services across borders has increased tremendously over the last generation, which makes people more vulnerable to that kind of competition. Technology is a second factor, which has accentuated the first. Data, goods travel much more rapidly as a result of some of the technology that drives it. And finally, policy has an impact in that the way that countries set their tax rates, their trade policies, and their employment law can have a very big impact on how much the winners win and the losers lose. You mentioned globalization as a key contributing factor, but does globalization always create a disadvantage for lower earners? I think this is a great misperception that sometimes gets propagated a little bit too far. Uh, it's often said that the people who are on the lower end of the spectrum always are the victims of globalization, but it has advantages for them in several ways. We do have a lot of Americans working in this country for foreign companies who have created factories and jobs here. And the other thing I like to point out is that prices are cheaper because there is that foreign pressure, that foreign supply and competition that holds the cost of living down for all of us. What are the consequences of growing income inequality? For the longest time, it wasn't clear that income inequality in itself was a bad thing. People have come to accept that inequality of outcome happens, but inequality of opportunity is something that people feel less comfortable with. And increasingly, we're beginning to understand that there is a growing inequality of opportunity because the data show us that people are much less likely to have the chance to move up through the income spectrum. That has two consequences. One, it seems clear that spending growth and economic growth can be affected by growing inequality. And secondly, the whole stability of both a social and economic system can be compromised if people lose faith in it. So what should governments uh, do to respond? What should they do to address income inequality? That's also a difficult choice because actions taken to more equitably slice the pie could ultimately affect its baking and make it smaller. So choices with regard to taxes or trade policy are going to have downsides that you have to be careful with. It's clear that we're not going to put globalization back into the bottle. But one strategy that does seem clear is that to equip a population to respond to globalization and take advantage of it is to make education at all levels more readily available and of higher quality. That's the way that cultures can take advantage of globalization instead of being victims of it. Well, Carl, thanks very much. Good to be with you. Thank you for listening. For more insights from our economic research team, visit northerntrust.com slash view.